Hello, my fellow YouTubers, and welcome to Random Thoughts from me, O Ted Bear. Trisha Hirschberger, in her vlog series, The Naked Truth, on Wednesdays, asked another excellent question I felt I could add to the discussion. Censorship. Now, the practice of officially examining books and movies, etc., and suppressing the unacceptable parts. Now, my questions that kind of uh, fit with hers is the uh, who gets to choose what parts are unacceptable and need to be suppressed? The second question is in this on demand personalized entertainment world, is censorship really? Really, a, a, necess a necessity. Well, there is a certain level of censorship that we that we can, we expect in our daily day to day lives. We call it rules of, of civilized society. You know, you keep mainly we call them rules of society mainly because censorship has got gone too far from time to time by people who want to protect us like a loving parent. The natural stance of a parent is a protective one. Protecting their offspring from uh, protecting their offspring until they're actually ready to understand you know, the dangers of the world. You know, there is a gap between when a child is feels they're ready to get it and when a parent is ready for them to get it. Uh, some call it the rebellion phase. I call it the dare phase because you scold them. You say, don't you dare watch that movie. Don't you dare uh, listen to that artist or smoke or hang out with those people. Or don't you dare play that video game. Don't you dare do it because it's bad for you. You tell them why. You put your research together and you put it out in front of them. You say all that. And what was the, the only thing that child heard was dare. Don't believe me? Remember back to when you were that age. Although, if it wasn't for the dare reflex, a lot of the outrage artists wouldn't have a fan base. Yes. I am referring to the infamous morality quests of the 80s and 90s, where outrage artists and those who were outraged battled for the souls of the world. Eh, if you want a modern day equivalent, think of uh, social justice warriors. Yeah, the social justice warriors, not the people who actually, not the activists with research, actual proven research, and clearly founded goals, because there is a difference between one and the other. Those who would say Sam Kinison was out to destroy the moral fiber of our youth. Uh, if you actually listen to him, you know, he made fun of televangelists. He uh, talked very frankly about sex and drugs. And you really didn't have to guess his views on relationships. He was simply a comedian who made adult jokes. And besides, he really wasn't trying to be a role model for the youth. He said that himself several times. The youth started listening to him because, well, one, he was outrageous and they found him funny. And basically because their parents and the moral questers kept telling them not to. Just like they did when their parents told them not to listen to that red fox. Google it. You'll understand. Now... There were people who uh, pushed against the moral questers because the more they did, the more attention they got, and the more money they made. 
They are the shock jocks who looked at their fines from the FCC as badges of honor. And those who told us if you didn't agree with what they said, you didn't like America or free speech or women. You know, <coughs> these people were the ones that upset me the most. Because I do like free speech, America and women. You know, what I don't like is this uninformed crap. What I do, what what was I to do? Well, simple. I rejected the flawed premise. Both sides said I had to join one. I didn't. If something offends me, there is no rule saying that I have to like it. Not what the moral questers, or no matter what the moral questers or the outrage artists have to say. For the simple for the simple fact that both sides piss me off. The only reason why I tolerate the yelling from both sides is that because the the ability of these people to continue to yell proves that freedom still exists. Now, after saying all that, what does this mean for the topic of censorship? It means that there is a place for it in our society if only to maintain the rules of society to maintain that firm bedrock okay maybe you know well, too many jokes you know, for parents looking to protect their children until they are ready to be taught the dangers of the world for adults Looking for shelter from the storm, or maybe an entertainment standard. But all this, all this, it can't be a conservatorship. Conservatorship, legal concept, in the U.S. where a guardian or protector is appointed by a judge to manage the financial affairs and or daily life of another due to physical or mental limitations or old age. I, cho I choose to view that which I find entertaining and informative. I choose not to view that things that will upset me. And I understand and know the difference. I am not a helpless child. I am an adult with my own mind, morals, and beliefs. I will share them only if you want to hear them. So don't push yours on me. But that was just random thoughts on censorship and freedom of speech because they really, really do go hand in hand. I hope I made some sense. And as always, I just hope I helped.